Testimony of all you've given me. Yes, all you've done is worth my song, but your heart is why I sing. Your presence is heaven to me. Your hands are the home. 
everybody. If you're taking care of little ones, I know it can be really hard to pay attention and enjoy the service, and it can be really distracting to everyone around us and the speaker. So if that's you, we have resources available to help you. You can step out into the lobby where we have plenty of seating and three TV screens that display the sermon. We also have a nursing mom's room outside of the southwest entrance of the sanctuary. You can see the sermon there too. Thank you for helping us in this way. this again he is risen all right good hey will you stand to your feet greet some people around you i know that the introverts don't like this part of the day but come on just for 20 seconds make somebody the church with you it's easter sunday no matter who you are we're so glad that you're here whether it's your first time you've been with us a long time you're welcome here introverts just step out of your skin for just a minute we're just so glad to have you here in the house of God with the family of God with us. And now if I could push you just a little bit further, if you could grab your neighbor by the hand, we're gonna pray. We're gonna just pray for each other real quick. Grab your neighbor by the hand all across this room. In a divided world, it's a beautiful thing to stand in unity. So let's just pray for the one on our right and our left real quick for about 10 seconds. Lord, we thank you for the person on our right and our left. We stand with them and we commit them to you for today. Lord, we didn't come here just to go through the motions, just to show up for another Easter service, just because it's tradition. We came here to meet with you. And so we pray and ask that you would speak to the one on our right and our left, in front of us and behind us, that you would build your kingdom in their life, in their family, in their home. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, okay, we're gonna just pray. We always like to pray for our local church, but we're gonna pray for the entire church of Kootenai County right now. So maybe just extend your hands towards the direction of some church that you know about. And we're just gonna pray for all of them. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this whole region. And we pray that you would fill every church and congregation this morning for their, for their services, their gatherings, those that are lifting their voice to preach the true gospel, that you would fill them, that you would speak through them that you would uh, build your kingdom in this county. We bless the other churches. We're not against them. We stand with them and for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before you sit down, I just wanna give you one invitation. In just a few moments, right over here under the light of the cross, we're gonna be baptizing people. If you've not yet been baptized, and you didn't plan to come here today to get baptized, but maybe even right now you feel like the Holy Spirit's speaking to you and you know that it's your turn. There's a class going on right now, right across the hall in the vertical room. And we would love to invite you to go to that. You can come to the 1111, we'll baptize you. Everybody will celebrate. And we even have a change of clothes for you. So if you worry about your Sunday best, well, we can help you with that. But Baptism is such an important step in your faith. So if that's you and you wanna do that, just go over to that class right now and then we're gonna be baptizing during the uh, 11 gatherings. So awesome. You guys can grab a seat. 
Thanks for being with us this morning. It's a, it's a beautiful day, Resurrection Sunday. I just wanna, um, if I could get the lights up real quick, I just wanna greet some really special people to our community. If this is your very first time to Heart of the City Church, would you just raise your hand high in the air? I've got some friends that are gonna run to you and put a little bag in your hand. Wow, people all over the place. Thanks for being with us. Make sure you keep your hand up until they get to you. It's just a little gift bag that we wanna make sure everybody gets. Awesome, well, we're so glad that you're here with us today. For those that were given a gift bag, on the outside of that is a little white and blue card. If you wouldn't mind grabbing that card and pulling that off the bag and filling that out to the, to, to the degree that you are comfortable with, we're not gonna sell your information. We're not gonna do anything weird like that. We're not gonna bother you. We will call you one time just to let you know that we value that you're here. See if there's any questions we can answer for you um, or any way that we could point you in the right direction. And also, if nothing else, if you would fill out the place for prayer requests, we pray through those every single week. So um, here in a few moments, you could drop those in one of the buckets around the room or on your way out today, you could drop it in the wood, bas uh, the wood box by the doors on your way out. But we're just so glad that you're here with us this morning. Church family, you stand and welcome our new friends properly. All right, when you guys all came in and found your seat this morning, there was one of these cards on your seat. There was one on every single seat and I think a pen too. So if you would hang on to this card, don't lose it, don't tear it up, don't throw it somewhere. We're actually gonna go through these together, everybody as a family at the very end of this gathering. So if you would um, just set that somewhere where you can find it later, we're gonna do that together later on. So uh, here you go. Well, we just wanna say, uh, that we're so glad that you're here today, whether it's your first time with us, some new friends, or you've been with us for a while, I wanna let you know that we're not just a church that gathers on the weekend. We're a church that, uh, a church of small groups really, that we value being together with and for one another. And that we just believe that to live fully in the life that God's offered us, it takes not only the Holy Spirit inside of us, but other people around us. So we wanna invite you to find a small group. If you don't know where to start, check out a group called Next Steps. It happens the first four Tuesdays of every month at 6.06 p.m right across the room in that vertical room um, on Tuesdays at 6.06. It's a great place to start if you don't know where to begin. With that, let's check out these video announcements. Hey, Heart of the City Church, happy Resurrection Weekend. My name is Jamie. <laughs> and I'm Risha. And these are this week's video announcements coming from our hearts to yours. Hey family, we just wanted to let you know that the church office is closed this Tuesday, April 2nd, but will reopen Wednesday for regular working hours. Our next All Church Prayer is coming up on Saturday, April 13th. We're gonna kick off at the CDA campus at 8.30 a.m. for a light breakfast, and then we're gonna pray together from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Please join us for a powerful time of prayer as we join together as a church body. Childcare is provided, but is limited, so make sure to sign up your child at theheartcda.com. Hey ladies, this announcement's just for you. Our next Revive is coming up Tuesday, April 23rd at the CDA campus starting at 6 p.m. Please mark your calendars. You don't wanna miss this. Stay tuned for more details. Hey family, we're really excited for something new and very special coming up here at The Heart. Check out this promo video. We are so excited to be launching the Heart School of Ministry Yay. this coming fall, September 2024. Stay tuned for more details. Here at The Heart, we love our guests. So if it's your first time with us, we wanna say thank you and let you know you are welcome here. We're also very passionate about getting the word out of what God is doing in our city. If you wouldn't mind sharing our Facebook Live or YouTube Live links, you never know who you could reach. We also wanna let you know that there is communion available at either side of the stage or in the back of the sanctuary if you would like to take it at any point during musical worship. And lastly, if you want to stay in the loop of what's going on here at The Heart, please go to theheartcda.com so you can subscribe to our weekly email. And that's it for this week's video announcements. Bye! School of Ministry, come on. Hey, why don't you stand to your feet? 
want to let you know what we're going to do for the rest of the day. We're going to turn the lights down low and the music up loud, and we're going to worship the King of Kings. Now, if you're new around here, you might see some people come forward up to the altar. You might see some people raising their hands, dancing even, kind of going crazy. We just want to make sure you know, this is not just because we're psychopaths. It's because we actually believe that God stepped out of heaven, came to earth, and he redeemed us, and that he's the king that's truly worthy of our praise. We actually believe that we should cheer louder for the King of Kings than for a football team on Sunday. We're not just a charismatic church just because we're hyper people. We actually believe that God is worthy of everything. And so if you're new to sort of this atmosphere, you just come to church on Christmas, Easter, and occasionally, we want you to know that we're so glad that you're here. We also want to invite you to not just dip your toe in, but jump right in because the water's warm and the King is good and he's here today. And we're not just here to go through church, we're here to meet with God. And so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna begin to sing and worship. We're also gonna bring our tithes and offerings. So there's some buckets around the sanctuary. I know a lot of people prefer to give digitally. There's gonna be some instructions up on the screen, but I wanna remind you that God's given us everything that we have, the breath in our lungs the roof over our head, every uh, bit of food that we eat and the things that we have. And so today, as we remember that Jesus rose from the grave and he gave us life, that we would sow back into the kingdom by giving of our tithes and offerings. So let's just pray and then let's begin to worship today. Lord, we thank you that you're in this place. We thank you that you meet where people come with faith. It's not about the building. It's about people coming together in unity and faith to seek your face. I thank you that nobody came to hear any man or woman preach today. We came to hear from you and we declare no spirit, but the Holy Spirit is allowed in this room. Lord, we say, come and have your way. Fill the room with your presence. Fill every kid's classroom with your presence. Speak to us. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. And everybody who agreed said, amen. amen. Come on, let's worship the King of Kings. Look to him, look to him. Forget about us, just forget about even your name. 
There's something beautiful that happens when the saints of God come together and worship the Lord. Revival looks different in every nation, but I'm crying out on your behalf to see revival sweep through this place. I'm not satisfied with yesterday's bread. I'm not satisfied with the encounters that happened last night and the encounters that happened the night before. I wanna see revival break out in Coeur d'Alene. I wanna see it sweep through the nation. Oh God, I'm crying out. I'm crying out for revival to break out here. Oh, for services to sweep through this nation again with revival. This blood, it spills over, over into the nation, to the surrounding nations. Are there any hungry? Are there any thirsty? Are there any hungry? Are there any thirsty? Are there any crying out for God to move again? Are there any crying out that will wait until the wee hours of the night asking God to come? Are there any that are broken over revival? Are there any that is broken over the presence of God? Are there any that's broken to see the lost saved again? Are there any that's broken to see revival break out again? Oh God, oh God, don't let us be the same. Oh God, I'm asking again, God, do what you did in the nations, God. You said you would pour out your spirit. Come on, come on, just ask him to pour out his spirit upon you. Come on, just ask him to pour out his spirit upon you. Come on, begin to ask him for him to come. Come on, hungry ones, hungry ones, those that want him to come. Come on, begin to ask him to come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy name, pour out your spirit. Come on, Marty. Pour out your spirit. 
We won't settle for just another Easter morning. If you just wanted a nice little feel good, give you enough oomph to go the next 51 weeks. In one sense, you came to the wrong place. And in one sense, you came to the right place. Would you do something with me in this moment? I, I don't usually do this, but I just feel led in this moment. Would you, would you just lift your hands in a posture of receiving this morning? Whatever that looks like for you. God, we come to you and we say, not my will, but yours be done. I just think of Jesus in the garden and crying out to you saying, if, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, we come to you in a place of surrender this morning, not content with just another tradition, not content with just going through the motions, not content with business as usual. I get this sense that there's, there, there are some lives and some patterns that need to be shaken up in this house this morning. There are some mindsets that have been going the wrong direction for far too long. And you thought you might get by with just a nice little feel good Easter morning. God has so much more. Father, we thank you that you have so much more for your children, so much more for your children than just a little in and out nice little tradition. Oh God, we thank you for your presence in this house this morning. We honor your presence in this place. God, we pray that worship would not just be a song for us. Worship would not just be something we associate with musical notes, but worship would be a lifestyle. Worship would be a reasonable response, a logicos to what you have done and to who you are. We come to you desiring to offer you a reasonable response not only honoring you with our lips, but let our hearts be close to you. Not only honoring you with our song, but let our hearts be close to you. Let us offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, for you are worthy. You're the only one who's worthy, and you are worthy of all. Praise, but not just praise. Thanksgiving, but not just Thanksgiving. Adoration, but not just adoration. A whole life surrendered. Proskuneo before you. We honor you, God, and we say whatever you have, that's what we want. The things of man, we say, nah, I tried that. I drank from that well. It does not satisfy. Whatever is you, that's what we want this morning. Oh God, we honor your presence and we glorify your son, the King of Kings. And in his name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated, church. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your presence here this morning. 909, I thank you that, God, you wake up so much earlier than we do. You've already had your coffee, Lord. I'm just, I'm kidding, that's, that's not biblical. Um, but who knows, he could do whatever he wants. He's God, even if he doesn't need it. You think he needed rest? He didn't need rest, but he chose to. He can choose to do things he doesn't need to do, you know? He's a little bit bigger than our boxes. That's not what I'm preaching on. Hi, I'm Seth, good to see you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Oh, it is so good to see you. It is so good to be with you this morning. I'm honored to be able to have the great privilege of sharing the word with you today on this Resurrection Sunday. And we're gonna jump right into it. I don't, I don't, I don't have like a special little, special little intro for you. We're gonna be reading from John chapter four this morning. The Gospel of John is John the disciple's account of the life, not yet, I'll, I'll invite you. I'm gonna give a little context first. John the Disciple's account of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. This is John's mission statement for his gospel account that he says in chapter 20. That his primary purpose is this. That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. See, I like this from John because I like clarity. He does A lot of the things that John says are very kind of mysterious, and I would use the term swirly-twirly, although that's not from the Bible. It's from a movie. Um, but... 
I love how clear his mission statement is. He's, he's not beating around the bush. He says, I didn't write this so you could know about a good teacher. I didn't, I didn't write this so you could have a good example. I didn't write this so you could have your best life now. I wrote this that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Christ is the Greek form of Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed, the King of Israel, the Son of God, that by believing you may have life in his name. That's a clear mission. In chapter four, we find Jesus traveling with his disciples from Judea to Galilee. Now it says in the text that he had to pass through Samaria. He had to, which I, I, I would argue is a bit of a loaded statement because at this time, Jews typically avoided passing through Samaria. You see, they had a bit of a turbulent relationship, the Jews and the Samaritans, that went back hundreds of years. And I don't have time to go too far into the history, but I can tell you this, they did not associate with one another. But for some reason, Jesus had to pass through Samaria. Now, as he was traveling, he came to a well. And it wasn't just any well. This was known as Jacob's Well. And it was a location rich with Jewish history. And, and Jesus would have known about this location. Now, he sat by this well in the heat of the day, the sixth hour, it says. And he was alone. His disciples had gone into town. But he was not alone for long. We're going to pick up the story in verse 7. Now, will you stand with me for the reading of the word? For those of you who are new to our culture, I invite you to stand for the reading of the word because it is distinct. It is perfect. It is living. It is active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And we honor these words higher than any other words I share today. Starting in verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God... And who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, <laughs> you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? <laughs> I love that question. He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will, come, will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. This is God's word. You may be seated. It's not lost on me that on Resurrection Sunday, also known as Easter Sunday, that not everyone here today usually participates in church. And I just want to say to all of you, if, if that's you, I'm so glad you came. You are welcome here. Now, whether church is a regular part of your life or it's more of a loosely held tradition than you engage in at times, or this is the very first time you've experienced something like this, which actually might be the case if you have been in church, but... 
It's, the truth is that each one of us came here today with a story. And that's not a profound thing to say. Of course each one of us has a story. We're human beings. And no one gets this far without experiences and situations that shape us and impact who we are becoming. Now, every one of us in the room can look back at parts of our story and identify challenges, hurts, and maybe even trauma. Still bearing the scars to prove it. With that being said, all stories are not created equal. For some of us, these painful experiences haven't been just parts. They've been the main plot line. For some people in the room today, that's true. You see, the woman that met Jesus that day at the well, the woman from Samaria, she had her own story, and maybe it's one you're familiar with. But as familiar as you might feel with the Samaritan woman at the well, there is a lot that we do not know about her. What we do know is that she was a Samaritan, which meant something. She came to the well alone. And she came at a very odd hour of the day. She had five husbands, or she had had five husbands. And the man that she now had was not her husband. You know, through the years, scholars have tried to better understand what these elements about the Samaritan woman, what they mean. And we'll talk about some of those scholars' conclusions. But for now, I would ask you to keep the woman at the well in mind as we are invited into part of another story. Tell myself I'm a little too hard to say.
was you saw a woman dealing with trauma from her childhood, trying to live her life for God, but caught up in addiction. I want to read to you some of these lyrics that we just heard in case you didn't catch them. Some call it a habit. Some call it a sin. Some call it a pattern. I don't know where this ends. They call me a daughter, but I don't believe them. Baptized in the water, don't feel any different. All I know, it's a sign. So I lift up my hands, worshiping Jesus, but I'm drunk again. I wonder how, how many of us can find ourselves in that story. Now, you might be saying, well, Seth, I haven't struggled with alcohol, so I can't see myself that way. There are many ways that we try to numb our hurts from the past. Maybe it isn't alcohol for you. Maybe it's sexual addiction. Maybe it's the love of money. Maybe it's a compulsive relationship with your phone. AKA your pacifier. There are many anesthetics for the soul. Many ways that we try to forget pain and they look different for each one of us. I wanna call your attention back to the woman at the well. There are a few approaches that theologians and scholars have taken to interpreting the situation that the woman found herself in when she encountered Jesus. One approach, and I would say probably the most popular approach, is to see this woman as a flagrant and habitual sinner. Let's look at the fact that she came to the well at such a strange hour, the sixth hour of the day, the heat of the day, an odd time, not normal. Or how about that she came alone, when in this cultural moment, it was very odd for a woman to be unaccompanied in traveling to a well. Perhaps these two elements suggest that she was trying to avoid other people because just maybe she was a social outcast, maybe because of her own behavior. Then we have the topic, the uncomfortable topic of her five husbands and the man that she now has that is not her husband. Is she a serial adulterer? Was she running around on those husbands? Maybe even a prostitute? At the very least, she must be living in sin. This approach to the passage has gained a lot of traction over the years. But it's actually not the only viable interpretation. I want to tell you about a different way that this passage can be read as well. But first, we're going to see part of another story. One person is dead after this crash. One other person was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. You have no idea the kind of day that I just had. I have no idea. Seriously? I mean, you wake up, you drink, you drink when you get home. You have no idea what it's like to be. Why don't you just back off? Go!
Every time I walk out of the house, but on another face, just to blend in with the crowd, so nobody sees me. You will never believe me. I tell you that I'm whole, but I'm still healing. I tell you that I'm happy, but I'm grieving. Thought I was a fighter. I'm still in the fight. But if I'm being honest, I'm not being honest. I'll give you roses, just hoping you don't see the weeds of my garden. If I'm being honest, I'm in my darkest. I'm sitting here waiting and praying for someone to show me what love is. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Every time I'm past the hardest part, here comes another ghost just to pull me through the dark. I thought it was over. I tell you that I'm whole, but I'm still healing. I tell you that I'm happy, but I'm grieving. Thought I was a fighter. I'm still in the fire. We just saw a man grieving the loss of a loved one, trying to keep up appearances to convince everyone, including himself, He's okay. This one might hit a little close to home for a lot of people in the house today. You may not have recognized it, that that was actually my voice singing that version of that song. And I almost didn't agree to it because I recognized I was going to be preaching and that we were also going to be having me sing a song in the middle of the sermon. I, the only reason I share that with you is that part of the reason I said yes to our creative team is that those words mean something to me. I know what it's like to feel the pressure of making everyone, a thousand people on a Saturday and a Sunday, think that everything's okay. Now, that story isn't my story. That story is not even the actor's story. And maybe it's not yours, but can you find your story in that one? Whether it's the loss of a loved one or some other hidden pain beneath the surface, many of us walking, are walking around every day trying to convince everyone that we're fine. You ever noticed how culturally, when you ask someone how they're doing, they kind of just have to say, I'm good. And if they answer any other way, it's like, whoa, I, I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't actually, I wasn't actually asking how you were doing. I was just greeting you. Please forgive me for asking that question. You might notice if you talk to me and you greet me, I rarely will ever say that because I try to never ask that question unless I'm ready to hear the answer. You'll notice me usually saying it's good to see you because it is good to see you. And if I have time in that moment and virtue in that moment to hear how you're really doing, I'll ask you. In light of this kind of experience, I wanna tell you about the other primary way that the story of the woman at the well is interpreted. Some 
of you may have noticed, some scholars have noticed that there is no mention of the word sin in this passage, no mention of a need for forgiveness or a call to repentance, nothing like that. We might have expected to see something like that in this text if this woman was truly as reprehensible as many have interpreted her to be. See, it was not completely uncommon for women to marry more than once in their lifetime in this cultural context. So easy to read the Bible through our own cultural lens and say, I'm just reading it straight. Give me a break. Give me a break. What you mean is I'm reading it through the lens of the United States of America in 2024, and I'm calling it straight because I'm that culturally egocentric. Happy Easter. <laughs> Many women were married for the first time as a young teenager. Not like what makes us feel comfy, like 19. My wife was 19 when we got married. She was able to make that decision for herself. I'm talking about young teenagers. And often to much older men. I'm only three old years older than her, by the way. <laughs> The gap felt pretty big at the moment. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that there. But in this culture, the gap often was actually very big. Very young women with a lot older men. And it wasn't abnormal for the woman to outlive her first husband and maybe even her second. And if a woman's husband died, she would usually need to get remarried in order to maintain access to legal, economic, and social connections. I know that might sound foreign to you. Maybe that should open your eyes to the fact that this text is written for you, but not to you. Even in cases of divorce, men were usually the ones who held the majority of the power and the leverage to divorce and men would often divorce their wives simply because they were not pleased with them. A certificate of divorce because of hardness of heart. And once again, if a man divorced a woman, remarriage may have been her only viable path to financial and, sto and social stability. What about... What about the man she currently had? It was not her husband. How are you gonna weasel your way out of that one, Seth? I'm not trying to weasel out of anything. I'm presenting two different interpretations, but I hear, I hear some of your thoughts. I'm not terribly concerned with them, but. <laughs> Marriage laws were different back then. Certain people were not allowed to get married at all because of their status and others were restricted to only marry certain people of the same class or status. In these cases, some couples would opt for something akin to what we would know maybe as common law marriage, perhaps even seeking to be married before God, even though the state refused to recognize their marriage as legal. What about what she has to say with regard to God and faith? In verse 12, we saw that she has at least some knowledge of her spiritual heritage and that she identifies to some great degree with that spiritual heritage, even though she would have been viewed by the Jews as a, something along the lines of mixed blood. She still identified with Jacob. Then directly following the passage that we started with in verses 19 through 30, we read that she recognizes Jesus as a prophet and then immediately begins to talk about worship specifically about the contrast between Samaritan and Jewish worship in their traditional places of worship. If you're familiar, you know what I'm talking about. See, Jesus shifts her paradigm. He explains to her this beautiful truth that we now get to enjoy, that the time was coming and now had come. I love that Jesus said both. When worship is not about a sacred location, I'm gonna say that again for everyone sitting in the, in the church seats today. Worship is not about a sacred location, but about spirit and truth. 
She responds by affirming her belief about the coming Messiah. And Jesus tells her that he is that Messiah. Now, she, she then goes into town, it says, and tells the people, come, see a man who told me all I ever did. I mean, he didn't technically say all you ever did, but it made enough of an impact on her. And who knows what Jesus said that John left out. And they listened to her. Selah. They listened to her and they came to meet Jesus. It seems that this woman had at least some credibility with her surrounding community. Is this a story of a woman given over to her sinful desires, ostracized due to her own poor behavior? Or is it a story of a God-fearing woman, either widowed or abandoned or a combination of the two, carrying the scars of suffering that was beyond her control? The truth is, we don't know. And maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe that's not the point of the story of the woman at the well. Maybe there's just enough mystery left here for each of us to see our stories reflected in hers. And maybe this story actually has more to say about who Jesus is and about what he does than about specific details regarding the woman at the well's personal life. Let's return one more time to the stories of the man and the woman into which we have been given a glimpse today. Oh, you What's that travel? Yeah. Oh, good, good, yeah. Definitely grab a drink, because that's what you need. You have no idea the kind of days that I just had. I have no idea. You're second choice, you drink. You have no idea what it's like to be. Why don't you just back off? Our the moment no. when I yeah, heard yeah. you say my name. It's the first time in so long I'm not afraid. Not afraid, and you are the voice that calms the storm inside me. Castle walls that stand around me. All this time, my guardian was asleep, and you are the light that shines in every tunnel. There in the past, you'll be there tomorrow. All my life, your love was breaking through. One person is dead been after this crash. And it's always been you. My northern star. Your love will be the compass of my heart. Oh, I just want to be right with you. storm inside me, castle walls that stand around me, all this time my guardian was here, and you are the light that shines in every tunnel, there in the past you'll be there tomorrow, all my life your love was breaking through, it's always been here.
Jesus was there. Your darkest moment. You felt totally alone. When you had no hope. He was there and he cared about what you were going through. And he loved you there. At your lowest. His love was just as great for you as it ever will be. And you know, he's no stranger to pain. He knows suffering very well. See, today we celebrate his resurrection and a beautiful celebration it is. And he is risen. <laughs> Amen. But for a resurrection to take place, a death must precede it. Jesus experienced the worst pain imaginable. His flesh torn apart by whips, his head gouged by thorns, his hands and feet pierced with nails, his body hung on a cross in such a way to cause slow, agonizing suffocation. And then finally, death. In all this, he was perfectly innocent. And do you know why he would endure such a thing? For you. For the joy set before him. And you were the joy. He suffered and died on your behalf so that you could be made right with God and live forever with him. Seth, why do I need to be made right with God? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were dead and our trespasses and through Christ, we have been made alive. It is only in faith in Him which we can truly live. Don't make the mistake of thinking that Jesus doesn't understand your suffering or that He's afraid of it or that he's ashamed to talk about it. For some of you, a lot of your suffering is from the past and you've made decisions in light of that suffering that you now regret. For others of you, you are right in the middle of it, right now, in a dry and desolate land, seeking just a little relief from overwhelming pain. Maybe you're here and you don't even know you're broken. You're so numb that you don't even know there's a problem. I have to tell you, I'm gonna be real with you right now. That's the most dangerous place you could be. But it is good you're here. Whichever condition you showed up in today, Jesus, for some reason, he had to pass through Coeur d'Alene. For some reason, he had to pass through Heart of the City. For some reason, as wild and as maybe from your perspective, strange as we might be, he had to pass through to meet with you. And I believe that he comes to you today And just like he spoke to the woman at the well over 2,000 years ago, he says, ask me and I will give you living water. A water that will never leave you thirsty. A water that will become a spring within you, welling up to eternal life. Many of us have drank from many wells, from many springs. We've tasted the wells of this earth. How did that go for you? How did it go for you? When you thought someone of the opposite sex could fix you? 
How did it go for you when you felt like a substance would allow you to continue on? How did it go for you when you thought a certain income level would bring you contentment? How did it go for you when you thought, when I'm truly secure and safe, then I'll be happy? All those wells, they do not satisfy. And if you have drank from them, you know that they do not satisfy. There is only one water that truly satisfies and that wells up within us into a spring of eternal life. And there's only one who offers that kind of water and his name is Jesus. And I wonder what your response to him will be today. Will it be a reasonable response? Will it be an adequate response? Will it be a response that makes any sense at all? Regardless of how you came today, regardless of how people have interpreted you or judged you, Jesus came to meet with you and he's inviting you to drink of the living water. Will you say yes? I wanna ask you to bow your heads with me in this moment. Close your eyes. This is what I want to offer. I wanna offer the chance to make a commitment to Jesus as the King and the Lord of your life. The Bible says, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead and you will be saved. I wanna invite you into this commitment today. If you came here and you know that you have not given your life to Jesus wholeheartedly or that you did at one point, but you have since withheld that trust and rejected him. I wanna invite you to make a real commitment with your words and your heart. It can't just be vain repetition. I'm going to lead you in the prayer, but vain repetition has no power in it. What has power in it is the gospel of Jesus Christ and your reception and belief and faith in the gospel of Jesus. I wanna invite you to pray this prayer with me from your heart in church. I wanna invite you to pray with us as well, like this. Father, I know that I've sinned and that my sin separated me from you and that I was dead in my sin. But I thank you that you made a way for us to be close again. You sent your son, Jesus the Messiah, to die on my behalf and reconcile me to you. And it is in his name that now I have access to eternal life. Today I turn away from my sin and I turn toward you and I put all my hope and all my trust in the name of Jesus alone, amen. If you made that commitment today, either for the first time or you know that today you're coming home to Jesus after rejecting him, we wanna celebrate you and we wanna walk with you as a family of faith. And so I wanna invite you to do something very bold as we recognize you and celebrate with you this morning. Would you raise your hand right now? I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Anybody, come on, come on, I see that hand. I see that hand, come on. Today's your day, I see that hand. Woo! Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Today is the day of salvation and there is rejoicing among the angels of heaven. If you made that decision, that commitment today, whether you raised your hand or not, please do not leave today without going and seeing my friends, the Van Lings under the cross. They wanna give you a Bible and they wanna talk to you about next steps. Cause you just made a commitment on your own volition by yourself, but a life with Jesus is done in community and in a family.
We're gonna celebrate. I would ask you to stand right now, church. We're gonna celebrate one more time and we're gonna go into this song and we're gonna respond to Jesus because it is only because of what He has done. Come on, let's put our hands together for the King of Kings one more time. Beautiful. Can we also just thank those that put, there was so much work that went into those beautiful videos, the production team, the actors, the dancers. Man, that was phenomenal. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday. If, if I could just have two more minutes of your time before anybody sneaks out. If you would just find this card and find a pen, then grab a seat. Um, we're just gonna do one last thing together before we release for today. And I wanna let you know, this is the one time of the year that we do this all together, that we actually ask everybody in the room to fill something out. And so if you would just honor us in that, uh, if you have this card, will you hold it up and hold it in the sky? I, just want, I don't wanna get started until I see that everybody has it. There's also, you can uh, pull your camera out and aim it at that if you'd prefer to do it digitally. But uh, I think you guys all have a pen with these. We're actually just gonna take two minutes and do this together. Let me tell you a few reasons why, because I know Americans love to know why we're asking you to do something. Number one, the Bible tells us as shepherds that we're and leaders that we're to know those that we labor among and know the sheep that we're shepherding over. And so though this is just a card with some information, it, it helps us to understand where our whole family's at. And number two, it really means a lot for us to know how uh, impactful today was and where you're at in your relationship with God. And so wherever you're at in your relationship with God, maybe this is your first time to church and you don't even know God, we're so glad that you're here and we value that. So let's just take a moment and do this together. If you grab that pen or do it on your phone, if you choose one of those first three options there at the top, it says, this is my church home. So you consider this to be your family. This is your first time here. Or that third one's interesting, I'm a guest today. Maybe like this isn't your first time, but you don't consider this to be your home. You come occasionally or you belong to another church or you're from out of town. That would be the box that you would check there. So fill out one of those three boxes. And then that second section there, 
Um, just if you let us know how you first heard about the church, whether this is your first time here or originally when you came, it helps us understand where we should invest more resources in order to reach people the best way possible. So just let us know how you first came here. And then that whole white section there is just information about you. And that helps us to update our database, helps us to get you information that's relevant to you in an appropriate way. We, we usually send about one email a week. We don't fill your inbox with spam. And uh, we're gonna begin a texting thing soon because we know like 99% of people read their texts. And so um, if you just would fill that out, we're not gonna sell your information. We won't bother you too much, but um, I think that it's a really valuable thing for people to be in the know. In a busy world with so many things going on, uh, we just simply try and help make, make sure everybody in our church family knows what's going on. So fill that out. And then the bottom of that white section, this is really, really exciting. I want you to specifically look at that. It says, I would like to hear a message on. If you don't know this, starting next weekend, we start a sermon series called, You Asked For It. Guess what we're preaching about? What you asked for. So here's our goal, to preach biblically-based messages from God's word and God's heart about subjects that you're wondering about that you're wrestling with, that you care about, that are relevant to you and your family and society today. So, and, and we take this seriously. Chantel goes through every single one of these, categorizes every single thing that you write down in different columns. We read through all of them, we pray through all of them, and we choose certain things to preach, uh, to preach about based on what you ask for. So if you have a theological question, uh, maybe something from the Bible or something going on in society or what, whatever it is, if you want to hear something preached about, write it right there, and we'll look through all those and pray through all those. And then the last part of this, I see a lot of people looking at me. I hope you're filling this out. <laughs> the last part of this, this is really important for us as well. It's called the spiritual survey. You're going to check the first box if you're already in a real relationship with Jesus. You're going to check the second box if today was your was the very first time that you made a commitment to Jesus. We saw many, many hands go up, maybe 20 hands today. If that was your first time making a commitment to Jesus, that, that second box is you. The third box is if maybe your hand went up or you just knew in your heart you're making a recommitment to Jesus today, check that third box. And the fourth one, which if this fourth one is you, we want you to know we're so glad that you're with us today. That's You're saying, you know what? I'm not ready to be in a real relationship with God. I don't even know if I know what I believe, but I'm here today. Well, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know that you're in our midst and that you're part of our family and that you're still considering and we thank you for being with us. So if you guys all fill that out or do the digital version on your way out today, there's people at the doors that can just, you could just drop it right in the bucket. If you're a first time guest with us, that other card that you filled out earlier, you could drop that in the bucket as well. Um, and it, I just wanna close by having you stand to your feet. Hopefully you've all filled this out. Let's stand to your feet. Can we put our hands together for those 20 people that raised their hand one more time? Man, greatest day of your life. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna close in prayer and, uh, and release you to have an amazing Resurrection Sunday. If you did raise your hand today and make that commitment, or maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you know that you were, I've got a whole team of people over there under the light of the cross. Just as I release, if you would just make your way over there for about two minutes, we just would love to connect with you personally, put a Bible in your hand if you don't have one, celebrate you, and they wanna pray for you. So if that's you, make sure you head over there right here in a moment. Lord, we thank you for an amazing, beautiful day. We honor you, King Jesus, for stepping out of heaven and coming to us, that you would lay down your life, not just to cover over our sin, but that we would be brought to a right and restored relationship with you. We thank you that relationship with you is not just about heaven when we die, but about right now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd fill every one of us with your presence, that we would live this life the way that you designed us to live it, that we would walk out uh, the, the call that you have for each one of us individually and us as a church family. We commit ourselves to you. We honor you and praise you, King Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have an amazing rest of your day. We do need to reset this entire room with new cards on the chairs for the next gathering. So if you could grab all of your belongings, grab your card, 
take all your stuff out. Let our ushers reset all the chairs for the next gathering. That would really be helpful. God bless you. If you made that commitment today, please make your way over into the light of the cross. We want to celebrate with you, and we'll see you next week.